All right, so today I'm going to talk about calculating annualized returns using the XIRR function within Excel. So everybody's familiar generally with ROIs. Um, you know, so when you calculate your ROI, you're just looking at the total profit that you made on the deal divided by the amount that you invested. So, you know, in this example, say you invested 20000 total on a note and then you sold it later for 22000 your profit was 2 so you made 10 percent which is which is not bad um the issue it comes in with or, or what really matters is how long it took you to get that 10 percent um if it was over one year that's one thing if you got it over two months that'd be really great if you did it over if it took you five years that would be pretty bad so i like to also always look at the annualized return and the actual formula um is it, kind of complex and and I didn't want to include it here because it would just be confusing. Um, but the simple point is that what we really care about is what happens over an annualized basis. And so we can use the XIRR function in Excel to do that. The way the XIRR function works, it's really pretty simple. But in Excel, we just go equals XIRR parentheses. And then we put the values that we had and then the dates. And then you can put a guess. So generally in a note deal, you'll have a series of cash flows. So there'll be the amount that you spent initially. And then you may be getting money back over time. Like, for example, usually payments are coming in. If it's performing or if it's non or subperforming, there might be periodic payments. And then at some point you get an exit either by selling the note or if it went through foreclosure, um, you may have sold the REO or, or sold it at a sheriff's auction. So what you do is you put in your columns, and actually in mine, I have it sort of backwards, but you want to have a list of the dates that the cash flows happened and then the amounts of the cash flows. One thing that's important is that at least one of the values has to be negative. So think about it as the cash flow from your perspective. So when I buy a note and spend money and that goes out, then that would be negative. And then the cash coming back in is positive. If all the cash flows are positive, if all the cash flows are positive, you know, then you just get an error because there's really no return. What you're, if you made all the cash flows positive, what you're telling Excel is that you got a bunch of free money, which isn't really the case. So let's pull up Excel and look at this example. Um, there we go. So looking at this one, and I'm not, this is a, a deal summary from a JV deal that are recently closed out. And I'm not going to go into all the details of how it works. Maybe I'll do that in a future video. Um, but you've got, you're calculating a total profit on the exit and then the liabilities due to the JV partner, splits of interest that may still be due. So, so they're owed this at the end. But when you look at all the cash flows, there are actually a couple different ones. So, they funded 22,000 initially. And then in this particular deal, this was one that I thought had a good chance of having to go through foreclosure. So when JVs fund deals, they'll fund the amount for the note plus a reserve for expenses. And so since I thought this might be heading for foreclosure, I had them fund a large amount for the reserve. However, after we bought the note, the loss mitigation went very well. We got it back on track. We got a forbearance agreement, a trial payment plan in place, and the borrower started paying basically right away. Um, so at that point, once I knew that the probability of foreclosure was quite low, I refunded them the portion of the reserve that was intended for the foreclosure expenses. So a couple months into it, I gave them 7000 back, which was just a return of principal. And then I paid them the splits on the interest a couple months later because at that point it was kind of performing solidly and I was more comfortable with it so I went ahead and paid them half of the interest that was coming in at that point and then six months after that sold the note and so then what they were owed at the end was based on the initial funding minus the seven thousand um, plus some additional interest that had been received, plus the profit from the note sales, right? So we have these four kind of irregular cash flows. 
So when we put this in Excel, oh, let me back up. So if you look at the IRR, right? So if we want to compute the IRR, we would look at the total profit divided by the funding. So the way I did it was I just summed all the cash flows and then divided by the amount they put in and then added a negative sign because um, the initial funding is in there as a negative amount. But doing it another way, oops, if we looked at the dollar profit, you know, it would just be basically this plus this plus this and that. So it returned 37.992 JV. And then you could just divide this by how much they put in. And that shows negative, turn it into a percentage. And that shows negative because of that. So we just put a negative sign here, right? Until you get to the 17.2%. ROI. What's interesting to me is when we do the XIRR, and so that's this formula here, and in all, I already got it in here, but I'll put it in again just to show you. So we go equals XIRR, parentheses, and then the values. So the values are cash flows, comma, and then the dates here. And then I, and then it also can ask for a guess. I never put a guess. If for some reason Excel can't figure it out, then you can attempt a guess, right? But if you were going to do a guess, you would usually guess like 10%. So you would go comma, 0.1, and it doesn't actually change anything. Now, what's interesting is the XRR was 23%. The ROI was 17, but this was actually over about a year. So you would think these would be the same. The reason the annualized return got juiced was because of this return of the principal early on. So it's really beneficial for a deal if you can return principal and return interest as early as possible. So what hap what would happen if, say, instead of returning the principal a couple months in, just held on to that for the year? So in that case, this would be zero and this would be 7,000 more. Right, so if we turn that at the end, now the I'm just going to delete some of the stuff because it's getting confusing. Um, now the um, XIRR and the ROI are much closer. The reason they're a little different is because of that early interest split payout. So the faster you can get money back to your investors, the better their annualized return is going to be. Um, the other thing that's interesting is if you look at how long the deal takes. So after you buy a note, there's a period of time for the loan transfer. There's a period of time for loss mitt. Um, and it's real easy to lose months and months during that time frame, especially if you're depending on a servicer to do your loss mitt. So like what happens to our XIRR if the deal takes, say, a month later? So instead of closing on 11.15, it closes on 12.15. You know, drops by about 2%, 1.5%. IRR stays the same. Um, let's take an extreme example and let's say this thing took another year. You know, if it took a whole nother year to do this, now it would go down to 11.8% instead. So it, it just kind of goes to show that the more efficient you can be in executing the deal and bringing it to a conclusion as fast as possible, the better your annualized returns are going to be. Um, of course, then the rub becomes you've got to be able to reinvest the funds, right, and something else in another note deal. So that, that's a whole other challenge in and of itself. But, um, you know, if you're not familiar with the XRR function, hopefully this helps you um, give you another tool in your kit to look at your deals. And it's also worthwhile just playing around with some examples to get an idea of how big an impact um, being efficient and how you execute can be. All right, thanks.